Hey, Resistance Broadcast fans. Before we get started, I want to talk to you guys about Star Wars Card Trader by Topps Digital Collectibles app. Collect and trade digital collectibles, including exclusive Mandalorian episodic content. Download the app and relive every moment from the new Disney Plus series, as well as the entire Star Wars saga, including upcoming Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, on your quest to collect your favorite heroes, villains, weapons, spacecraft, and more. The app relaunched this week with a new user experience. New features like Workbench, which is a collectible trade-in function, revamped trading flows, newly added trade lists, wish lists, and a set completion tracker, which were all big asks of the community. To celebrate the relaunch, Card Trader released a much anticipated brand new Kylo Ren inspired set aptly titled, I'll Show You the Dark Side, which includes amazing types of never before seen collectibles. Star Wars Card Trader by Topps is available worldwide for free download and can be found in both the iTunes App Store or Google Play Store. The Rise of Skywalker. A few weeks away? Nothing coming out about the movie. No one knows what's going on. I don't... I'm just kidding. We got international posters, Dolby posters, uh... Tra trading cards, character posters, new footage, new TV spots, uh, international trailers probably out by the time you're watching this. The Rise of Skywalker marketing is kicked off, and welcome to the Resistance broadcast, everybody. We're here to talk about it. I'm John. How are you? Thanks for joining us today. James and Lacey with me, as always. It is time. The foot is on the floor. We have news stories that we're not even covering that involve this guy right here because there's too much news to talk about about this movie. Mandalorian, uh, all the stuff going on in Star Wars. So, guys, how are you? It, it, it is a great time to be a Star Wars fan. I, I want to start off by by saying, like, you know, these TV spots and posters and all that stuff. Are, is your mind blown with the Rise of Skywalker? Are you already done with the marketing that has lasted for like forty eight hours? No. Um, <laughs> I, you know what's funny? Sometimes when like new posters come out, I go. I feel the same way as if it was just like a fan poster, like a really cool fan poster. Like I see some there was there was one uh, in particular that was like uh, what, what was it was the IMAX one, the one with the ship, the one ship. Oh, Dolby. Dolby. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was like a French version of it where it was like an artist rendition or something. And I was like, yeah, it just looks like a poster and then like a fan art poster. Right. <laughs> you know? It was called Les Doblets. <laughs> Le Doble? Yes. It's French for Lacey. Dope. Dope. <laughs> Lacey, uh, do you think you ever hit the too, too much is like too much marketing point? I don't think so. Cause I love all content and all marketing and stuff like that. Um, I love new posters and whatnot, but I have to say the international poster is definitely what we've seen before by Disney and Lucasfilm, like Force Awakens, mm -hmm. the Aladdin, red, blue, orange, hodgepodge of characters. Let's get everyone on this thing type yeah. poster. Um, and interestingly enough, like why is Kylo Ren between Ray's legs? That's the one thing that I'm like, is that needed? Oh my God. It's Just, not needed. I'm neither, saying it shouldn't be on there. No, I yeah, know, but it's, but it's like a thing. Yeah. What does it's that mean? a pretty central piece of the poster. On Tumblr, maybe. No, it's in the. If you look at the poster, it's front and center. I, I know, but no one. I would like, prefer like the Millennium Falcon or something in the front and center. The closest I got to that is Kylo Ren is small, and Ray is really big. <laughs> Bigger Ray, yeah, yeah, yeah. I nothing about his placement between her body. Yeah. Parts. Really. No. Her leg is like right over his face. Yeah, it depends on what uh, group chats you're in and stuff, I guess. But no, it doesn't. It really doesn't. But there's also Porgs on there, Richard Grant's on there, Zori Bliss yeah, you know, is on there. I, you know, I, I got a point. Zori Bliss doing nothing. <laughs> James, I should do the Zori Bliss, uh, Bliss impression. You do a good one. 
<laughs> so for our audio <laughs> listeners, James is at a 45 degree angle, not moving at all. Just a mannequin. <laughs> Just a mannequin. Yeah. Um, uh, so I, you know, some, a lot of, a few people brought this up. Like, I can't believe Carrie Fisher's not on the poster. It's a disgrace. It hurt. It breaks mm. my heart that they did that to her. And I was like, and I got into it with a couple of people and, you know, try to, you know, polite discourse and that sort of thing. But I was like, look, uh, like James put uh, the other day, this is the encore for those characters. This isn't their trilogy as much as Mark Hamill maybe wanted it to be. Um, but, you know, uh, three posters carries on two of them. Harrison was only on one. Mark was only on one. And to be honest, they're only using eight minutes of footage, which means they're probably going to wind up cutting it down to two or three minutes that she's going to be in the movie. Uh, they're clearly been since day one of marketing this thing with celebration and on the leaked marketing posters we saw in February, they are focusing on the new, uh, generation here. So, and also, you know, they're like, well, they didn't make any merch for her. It's like, that would be a bad look if they're like, buy the princess Leia episode nine action figure. It's like, you're, oh, so you're making money off Carrie Fisher's name and she's dead that that's just a bad look you just don't do that so have you guys seen that going around people complaining about the poster i mean it's a we're back to the uh, um everything's right in the world again with star wars where we're, we're get our, our complaints now are about posters like we're past the heaviness of uh ryan johnson and stuff where we're back to complaining about dumb stuff like merch and posters have you guys seen any of that because i've been seeing a few complaints about like what they're doing with Leia and obviously, you know, the Rose stuff has, has been going around, but no, I've seen Rose, not Leia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't seen anything with Leia. Um, I, I feel like I've seen more of the Rose stuff, but, um, I just, I just thought it was interesting and, and we'll probably maybe talk more about this on Thursday, but that JJ article talking about the scene that they, deleted or they removed in order to bring her back so that might give us a little bit of play on like you know how long we think that scene was and how oh they got there and stuff yeah yeah right. but uh our guest on thursday is a big i don't know advocate for what they're doing there so yeah maybe yeah we'll that's for thursday. sure um yeah so did you have a favorite do you have a favorite uh, poster now that they're pretty much all out is there one that if you had to grab it is it the d23 one is it the main theatrical one? Is it the international one? Like, if you had to put one on your wall in a frame, do you guys have one that you're like, that's the one that's going up on my wall? The theatrical one where there, it's the white border, and it's Ray uh, to the side. I, I agree. But, uh, I think they yeah, finally. I think that's the best one. Yeah, I feel like they nailed the D23 it. D twenty three one's really good, but it it looks again like an art piece. Like it looks like an, it's animated or something, and it's like I I, I want to remember this is a live action piece of content and i can't get past that they used a toy of palpatine as the they didn't oh they didn't no i thought someone think it looks like the toy i seriously think somebody put a toy there and then Mm -hmm. they were like look it looks like the emperor and i'm like yeah it does look like the emperor but it doesn't look like that toy oh so that's not true yeah no oh Um, i don't know i mean it could be true but it doesn't look like it to me at all i thought that was a Dumb take. Does it look like <laughs> Sebastian Stan? Yes, more so. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, James, we have a lot of news to get into here. Um, so why don't we fire up that thing that we like to call the Resistance Report? It's the Resistance. All right, well, let's talk about it. Um, there was a TV spot, and this is funny. We're going to get, like, TV spot 68 here soon. Uh, but right now, the big one was released first on Instagram and then on YouTube, and uh, it had a lot of new scenes in it, which <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we're probably going to talk about it, but it's a different experience when you see it on YouTube, so... Um, let's talk about this, uh, this, this new trailer that we saw, I believe it's called end. Is that right? Or, end uh, home. What was it? It's end. No, I can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was I think it, it might be. That's what yeah. I thought. It till, sound right. Till, it was coming out though. Till the end. I think. Uh, yeah. I, well, that's what Finn says. Yeah. But I think they called it like the end TV end. spot or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, John, I'm starting with you on this one. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, what was, what was the whole deal with this? Well, I think the biggest thing was the the leap, the big leap there uh, at the mm-hmm. end of it. 
But just a few things um, going back and, and pointed out, like they could they verified that that is uh, Vader's helmet for sure. Now um, you see like yes. the little spoke uh, metal piece at the end. My little uh, theory got squashed quick on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Falcon, when they're flying to what I assume is Pisana, has the round dish on it. And in the international poster, we see the rectangle dish. So um, we're not sure if there's going to be a transition on the dish in the middle of the movie or, or what's going to be going on there. Um, now, the, the part that interested me the most is when Ray is on that, uh, you know, brick area, uh, like walkway with the steps and there's fire everywhere and snow. We're assuming that's Kajimi. Uh, mm-hmm. The person she's facing, uh, you see like a little red shadow and it looks like it could be a lightsaber. Could that be Kylo Ren? But then there's someone coming from behind her. So is this a situation where Ray's getting like enclosed on by the Knights of Ren? Is this where they're going to be uh, attacking her and she has to fight her way out of it? And then someone's got to bail her out. Uh, so I, I found that to be interesting because um, I even did like the the slow down thing. Like James gave me the advice on how to tap the keyboard and go frame by frame. And I was like, that's a red. Comma looks like and a, period, baby. It looks like a lightsaber uh, there. So I found that to be interesting. Um, and then um, the, the whole thing about Ray facing somebody. Now it's clearly Palpatine's pointy chair. So at that scene, there looks like she's definitely going to be facing Palpatine where we thought it might have been, you know, something else. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's a short clip, but it just it answers zero questions. Uh, I just, you know, like the observing some of the things I saw in it. And I'm glad it maybe even mixed my brain up a little more about what takes place when and what's going on in the movie. But it looks exciting anyway. That's so weird, John. I would say it did the opposite. I'd say it answered questions and it made a little bit more clear on when things were happening i died not for me because i'm so really? out of sequence right, yeah weird. yeah all right lacy what, what did you think of this did you where are you on that at least like did it help or hurt i don't think it did either because like it showed us new stuff and i had no idea as it, it is where things come together except like where Ray's in the forest I think that's the beginning of the movie I'm pretty sure Mm -hmm. but other than that like with the exception of the big battle scenes which you know are the end of the movie I don't know where all this other stuff lies in the movie but what I found interesting was earlier in the day which we will get to they released photos and one of the photos Mm -hmm. was Kylo Ren with like a blue hue to him and it looked like the photo they released months ago where he's kind of holding himself in place with the force and the stormtroopers are blowing back, which we talked about on an episode. And then they released the actual scene that it takes place all at the same time. It was kind of crazy. But that was, I think, my favorite shot in the trailer, like everyone else. Like, he clearly isn't trying to attack her or anything, which you're like, why not? Or did he already attack her and she just blocked it? Then she's jumping into space with no mask on to Finn, who's on the Falcon, who does have a mask on. He has one of the Empire Strikes Back face masks on. So it makes you wonder, like, is this being set up from Leia being in space and not needing any type of mask or anything to survive? So I don't know. It's just weird. But the whole thing of, like, her being on the ship and then she's staring at Vader's mask and then we know from the other trailers that they smash it kind of, like, together. Did they do it on purpose? I just have a lot of questions more questions than i did yeah, before I, i'm curious uh, james i want to hear you piecing this thing together because i was like i don't know what's where or what well, happened what or okay well the first thing is you said didn't answer any questions and we had that picture of them being blown back we now are confident that's the falcon that's not some weird oh, portal sure, or i said sure. that though when we okay. saw the picture i guess that no i know that's what everybody assumed or guessed right. but we we didn't know for sure now we have a definitive answer we've seen the scene The other thing, too, is like I really got the impression that that whole scene in the white room where they smash the mask, Mm -hmm. that's like somewhere in the middle of the movie, because almost immediately you got to think that takes place somewhere first order related because the mask is there. Right. So Ray goes goes to that place and then uh, she needs to like leave. So uh, we, we see another scene of Kylo Ren wearing the mask. It looks like it's in the white room. Then you, you got to think they do the whole smashing scene. Then after that, that she jumps over off onto the Falcon. Like, so she, that's somewhere in the middle of the movie and she like leaves again. 
Sure. Okay. I mean, so this is what you're saying. Like we, we kind of tried to piece this together where this might be the whole sequence where, cause in that shot, initially when they break the mask, we see Chewie's armor, we see his bowcaster. Uh, so, and mm-hmm. then we see him running without it. So we're thinking maybe they're trying to bust Chewie out of this place and that's why they go there. Um, mm-hmm. then you, you start introducing the idea of C-3PO holding Chewie's armor and gun. Like, is this a part of that? Are they like, as they're busting Chewie out, does C-3PO have to hang on to it? You know, like, so there's a lot of those things that can f- tie into that. I just don't know what the purpose of it is or when, like you say, when it takes place. Mm-hmm. Cause we know in that shot when Kylo Ren's being, uh, the stormtroopers are blown back and he's got the, like those, remember those speaker commercials back in the day when the guy's in the chair and the wind's <laughs> just like yeah yeah so that's Kylo Ren right there he's just like oh oh I'm getting blown back by the sound and he's holding his mask though so he still has his mask for whatever reason he, whatever reason he took it off I know where we, I always uh, I'm always wondering like when does the mask get shattered again or lost or you know that that t- that type of thing but I do agree that a lot of things we've seen can point to this location I just don't know what the overall like deal is I don't know, man. I, I'm starting to think that the Kijimi stuff is more at the beginning of the movie. Like first thing? Possibly. I know that that forest scene, we have reason to believe that's at the beginning too. But, I, I, but picture me here, or bear with me. We're on Kijimi, then we get on the Falcon and we go to Pisana. Then... Uh, after the whole Pisana thing, we go to the First Order and do the whole thing that I just described. Then after that, we leave and go to this like forest place where we like rally everybody up, and then we go to the big final battle at the end. Yeah, because the because the shot where like Poe is like pulling people in, like everybody come around, and we saw like Maz and everybody standing yeah. around. Doesn't that feel like it's on the same planet? That the we jungle were, planet? The jungle planet. I think and that yeah, also yeah. kind of feels like that's like the last, like before they go into the big final thing. Is the fi- So you, uh, do you think the final land thing takes place on the desert, Pisana? Uh, What land thing? What are you talking about? Well, like, you know, there's always a, a space battle, a land battle, a, you know, lightsaber thing. Oh, yeah, I, d- I don't know. The land battle is clearly where they're, like, riding the horses on the <laughs> on Star Destroyers and stuff. Stars. But yeah. you can't really see the land. I don't know. Uh, then it's got to be Pisana. Yeah, you're right. I don't Honestly, know. Maybe they go back. Uh, I don't know. I... Yeah, it, it, that, that's a good point. I mean, that's tricky. Like, right now, I, think about it a right now I, I could be like... They kill Palpatine in the first 15 minutes of the movie and then all bets are off or something. <laughs> like, I don't know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> uh, Poe flying the Falcon. What do you guys think of that? Am I going? Is this me? No- yeah, you have nothing to say about that? I didn't yeah. know it was my turn. I heard guys. I don't know what that means. Um, it means us, you and me. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. You and me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that it's really cool to see Poe fly the Falcon because we've never seen him do that before. That's really nice. Um, never seen and that then, before. <laughs> John, I actually wrote down that I thought you had a good idea of why he looks red. I figured you'd talk about that. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So James hates when I do these like tweets about like predicting things for episode nine. I actually thought this was a good idea. James used to hate when I did that for TLJ anyway. But... <laughs> <laughs> that's when like book it started you know <laughs> but yeah. so the the whole red beam blowing up or defrosting the planet or whatever and i think they might be used to heat up palpatine's uh star destroyers to free them from the ice or whatever i you see the red hue on all their faces and pose like oh my god so he's shocked about something and finn's just like Oh, yeah, I've seen that before. So it makes you think like there's some kind of Imperial or First Order type of weapon that maybe Finn has seen ha- used before that Poe's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, what is going on here? Mm-hmm. So that shot of that beam going down and blasting up that planet, I put it next to them uh, looking out of the cockpit. And I thought maybe that is that situation. And it's it's like the most Falcon thing ever to have to navigate your way through a really tough 
situation. Every Star Wars movie seems to have mm-hmm. that. You have mm-hmm. the asteroid fields in Empire. You have the Death Star in, in Return of the Jedi and Solo, the Kessel Run, uh, Force Awakens going through the, the Star Destroyer. Like every every Star Wars movie has the rite of passage where the Falcon has to do something. You got Crate going mm-hmm. through the you know surface of Crate. So right. I was just thinking that that might be that. I don't know. Yeah, I think. I like that. Uh, yeah, it, it totally makes sense. I think the other images, I'm assuming we're talking about the article with all the photos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then the other photos, what I found important is that you finally see all three of them together, Finn, Poe, and Ray, which we haven't seen. And all of them as actors have stressed that how important it is for them to be together. And I completely agree mm-hmm. because we mm-hmm. haven't had that Han, Leia, Luke dynamic yet. Right. So I hope we get a ton of it in this movie. Um, well, why don't we just use that to move to the next story or do you have other things or well, there's br- other images or bring that story into this and just knock that out now yeah that's true too there, there's the let's just knock it out then um the oscar isaac interview that he did where he was talking about how it was important in this one that uh ray finn and poe were all finally together yeah and right. pretty much what you just said Lacey, like the yeah. the original trilogy bonding we haven't had that right and now JJ appears to be like, oh, crap, we haven't done that. We better, <laughs> we better fix that. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, is there uh, other photos? Um, I mean, that photo is great because you can be wondering, are they in a cave? It looks like or, you yeah. know, Ray's got her lightsaber lit. Someone, someone said, is she using it as a torch or is she lighting it because it's time to fight? You got Chewy right behind them there. Like that's it's it looks like the same location that the behind the scenes stuff that was in the stakeholders meeting and then D23. There was a shot of the of them with Chewie in the cave and then C3PO with his head facing forward and we have the back of his head. Yeah. Like it looks like that same scene. Mm. It's just them in the dark and then not in the light. It looks like they went back to Dave and Buster's. (laughs) <laughs> the from from the solo uh the solo cockpit. one i was like that was that one was one of the funniest Buster's things ad. yeah that's one of the funniest what if things. this is dark ray jumped on the windshield of the falcon <laughs> like the second sister or whatever in the uh yeah, yeah, yeah. fallen order um, i mean it could be kylo too or something. so what one image i tweeted out that someone like got mad at me about was <laughs> was rose photoshopped into the photo of them on the the base. And it's a shot of Finn and Poe in the base. Chewie's there. And then you have uh, the character I'm calling Grambo, who's like a grandma Rambo. She's like this old lady and she has like a a bandolier on. And then you have a texting pilot, just this like female pilot who's looking down like she's texting. Mm -hmm. And then right, everyone is looking this way. Like, and if you're listening, off to the left. And then you just have Rose in front, sat there, looking right at the camera like it's an episode of the office like poe just said something stupid and she's like yeah it seemed out of place and like yeah. her lighting is a little bit different than everybody else's and and look uh, it's just an observation and like people are so sensitive about the rose thing that you can't even talk about it where i'm just like uh, it's just stop like I, it looked like they may have photoshopped her in that doesn't mean anything about her role in the movie or anything. I looked at a photo in a vacuum and I was like, that looks weird. And you guys agreed, didn't you? Yeah. And she was also the only one sitting. Everyone else is standing. Why is she sitting? Right. I mean, that like some of those details don't really bother me, but you're right. All those things together add up and it's like, oh, that's kind of weird. Hmm. But like, I mean, it's very easy. Somebody could just be sitting there. You know, it's very easy that I like, think it was she could I be... think it's highly weird that they have a scene where everyone's standing except one person. <laughs> That's just like a weird staging for a scene. You rarely see that unless it's like Ray sitting in front dead center. You rarely have someone just kind of like sitting down. In front of yeah. everyone. I felt like her in last Jedi, at the you had people standing and sitting. <laughs> yeah. For the one thing. Her staring um, at the camera though is 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 weird to me. Yes, because everyone's yeah. looking like they're paying attention to a meeting and she's like not. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's super yeah. weird. Um let me think here. <laughs> uh, oh, there was something about the whole like uh oh the the trailer played this is going back now, but the trailer played on Instagram first and everybody was like, Cool, it's right with the lightsaber. What's she looking at? We don't know. And then you see it on YouTube, you're like, Oh, it's Kylo Ren. Like now all of a sudden he's like in the frame. 
Yeah, it was weird then, to release the square version first. And then, yeah, you had her like jumping and you're like, where is she going? And then it's like, oh, there's also a YouTube version. And it's like Finn on the Falcon. It's like, oh, that completely right. changes the scene. Right. Um, which, yeah. I wonder which, if that was a mistake. Which shot are you talking about where it's um, Kylo Ren with the lightsaber? Kajimi. Uh, yeah, Kajimi. You don't think that's Kylo Ren? It's his, it's his cross guard lightsaber. Oh, when she's turning and there's the, the person behind her on the steps? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it is. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, so that at least means like <laughs> four encounters that we know of between the two of them. That we, like we're saying, we're getting that thing we wanted, which was more than one lightsaber fight. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you have the snow troopers and stormtroopers on Kajimi, and you see all those fires there. So it reminds me of like the village in, in Force Awakens. Like they're just there to or light Taco stuff Donna. up. Or Takodana. Right. Yeah. They're just there to, to, to burn places down. Um, so I don't know what the importance of Kajimi is. Uh, we finally get to see General Smiley, which was great. Um, what's his name? Pride. This is the a second General promo, Pride. Though. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's a second promo because he had the other one with Hux standing behind him. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Like a father son portrait. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's really fine. weird. Yeah. Um, and then I wrote the covers. Um, I don't know what I was talking about when I wrote the covers. What was the, covers the, the covers, because they had the prequel, the original. EW covers. That, oh, oh, man. Yeah. So people were like, Kylo Ren's with the good guys. There he is. And then I'm looking at the prequel cover. I'm like, it's Palpatine standing next to Kenobi. <laughs> so like, and it's just Palpatine like cut out and it just looks so weird with him in a white background in his robe <laughs> just like so funny it was literally they were like uh we want to do three different covers to sell more covers uh can you give us some photos and they were like okay here you go right it's just, I, I, I don't mean, mind when you, when you look at that photo and you go this is the this is the sequel trilogy those are the characters Right. That yeah. span all three movies. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like Darth Vader's next to like Yoda or whatever in oh, R2. Except for, and uh, except for um now I can't think of her name. Um Jana? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Not exactly sure why she would be in there. Well, she's probably gonna have a big part in this one. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't know. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I love speculating stuff, but people are just like Kylo Ren. You could see he's a good guy now. He's on the cover, and I'm not saying he's not going to. But the the cover of the magazine's not going to be like we're spoiling JJ's movie for you guys. Got to sell the circulation. You know. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> so, do you guys <laughs> want to talk about the last thing that we got then? Yeah. 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 All right. Well. Um. You know, there's been a lot of talk of what's going on after um, the firing or let it go or parting ways with uh, um, not Lord Miller, but uh, the Benioff and Wise, right? Those Mm -hmm. movies. And so it's kind of put up into question that since Lucasfilm has already set those dates of 2022, 2024, 2026, um, who's going to helm that? And we're starting to hear rumors, uh, one specifically from THR, that uh kathleen kennedy has picked their director they they have a plan they're not going to make the announcement um till january but uh it looks like they they might have some something in play and a couple of those options um john favreau because he's doing the mandalorian dave bullen because he's doing the mandalorian and also um i forget her name uh the first name Let's michelle name. rejwan michelle, michelle. rejwan yeah, and she just recently got uh, upgraded to uh, dealing with and, and kind of producing a lot of the live action stuff. So, um, Lacey, I'm going to ask you first, actually, a couple different questions. Uh, do you think any of these people will Filoni of the spots available? Rejwan, will it be? And will we Favreau more things to complain about after January? Wow. All right. <laughs> So, oh my God. Um, I think so that, much. yeah, John Favreau is definitely my number one choice. Like, I would bet on him if I was thinking of who will direct the next Star Wars movie. He's done an amazing job with The Mandalorian. They're shooting season two right now. It frees him up to 
do the movies if he's not doing another season, or even if he is, he loves dupli- like having him multiple projects at once. Um, he has experience from Iron Man and Lion King and Jungle Book. It's it just makes sense, and and he's a huge fan. I don't. I loved the episode that Dave Filoni did, but I still don't think he has the experience to do a full fledged movie yet. Um, I could see him helping out on a movie, or you could have a co director scenario where him and uh, Favreau do it together. Uh, Michelle, to me, doesn't make sense to be a director. I don't know why her hat is even being thrown in the ring. She's it doesn't not. really make sense to me. That there was two different parts of the story. I know that the yeah. second part of the story is about them heading up Lucasfilm as creative, right? Yeah, that's that's okay. what that is. Yeah, yeah. So it that's kind of like the three of them are rumored to be kind of like a, a three headed collective, right? Which makes right. sense. I mean, they've all had very a, a lot of success in Lucasfilm, but also professionally. So I think, yeah, why not? But if I was to choose someone to dile- to direct the next Star Wars movie, it'd be John Favreau. Hmm. Except, uh, and John, you can talk on this too, except for Michelle, right? She really hasn't done a whole lot. So I think we're... A couple episodes of TV or something? I think we're combining the two stories, which are separate, really. So them having a director pinned for this movie that they're going to announce, make an announcement about in January... Um, we mm-hmm. don't know what they're going to announce about it. And again, this is by the Hollywood Reporter sources are that they're going to make an announcement about the next Star Wars movie, which is allegedly still 2022. Um, they say she has a director uh, pinned to it and it's not going to be Ryan Johnson. Um, and she had said Kevin Feige's movie is ways off was her quote. So it's probably not his. Uh, and I believe he's only talked about producing anyway. So he'll probably even bring in his own director. So then you say, who's going to direct it? A lot of people do point to Favreau and like, was his Star Wars test run The Mandalorian? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know who's going to direct the movie. I don't think it's any, anyone like that. I don't think Favreau was going to do it. Um, he's, uh, from what I've you know heard, he's an LA guy. He doesn't like doing stuff outside of there. A lot of their movies are being filmed in England now. Um, he can keep doing The Mandalorian and, and drive 30 minutes to work. Um, so, you know, executive wise, then uh, to shift it to the other part of the story, you know, they're saying Kathleen Kennedy has a potential end game in sight. And maybe this is the end of the road for her, this contract that ends in, at the end of 2021. And they're saying that, you know, the three headed monster of Favreau, uh, Rejwan and Filoni could be the new, you know, three heads of Lucasfilm, uh, under the Disney umbrella. Rejwan obviously was JJ Abrams producer. And she got involved with Lucasfilm through TFA. Um, we can get into more about, you know, how she worked her way up and that sort of thing. But now she's the head of live action development. So here you go there. Favreau is a Disney's golden boy. Hit after hit. Fans mm-hmm. love him. No brainer there. And then you have Filoni, who's the tie to the root of the tree of Star Wars, which is George Lucas. So you got your street cred there with Filoni. So your diehard fans can say, oh, you've distanced yourself too much from George Lucas and his, and his, and his direction and his thoughts. And he's like, nope. We got his protege still right here. Dave, are we still doing the right thing? Yeah, we're doing, still doing the right thing. And then there you go. You still got your connection to that. So, I mean, the three-headed monster makes sense to me. Yeah, what I think was it's, that? That was, was uh, his Dave. That was my Dave Filoni. Uh, so I think <laughs> the, th- the three-headed monster thing works, but I think this is... They're saying this is through sources or whatever. I, it's, I, don't, know what the, I don't know what the deal is with it, though. Kathleen Kennedy has two years left on her contract. She's overseeing the next three series, the next first film uh, introduction or production for. So this is so way off. Um, But it's Mm -hmm. interesting to say that they're willing to report it, that people inside in the know uh, are leaning this way. I, I don't. Yeah, I thought it was weird. I don't see how. Like, it's almost like a report saying. Oh, well, maybe uh, Kathleen Kennedy, John Favreau, Michelle Rose Warren, Dave Filoni, uh, Kevin Feige. Maybe there's going to be like eight producers from now on. You know, you're just naming people that are involved. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I kind of understand um, like what I was saying. I, I, it it kind of makes sense. You have kind of cr- co-producers for The Mandalorian. And they probably look at that and they go, hey, this worked really well. 
these guys work together. It was like um, uh, production smarts meet Star Wars and storytelling smarts, you know? And it's like, okay, cool, that worked. Um, and then who is the, the new head of live action? And it's like, oh, well, it's this person. And it's like, okay, well, then maybe the three of you should just work together. So it, it does make sense. Um, but yeah, it is kind of interesting where, like, where does Kathleen Kennedy fit into that, you know? But I, I think a lot of people might say that's the right move. Like, Kathleen Kennedy is a good producer, but maybe be a little more hands-off and let some other creatives, you know, kind of handle some of this stuff. And you just, like, make sure it gets done properly. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm OK with this. I, I don't I don't think this would be a bad move, um, but we have to wait to see how the Mandalorian plays out. Right. Yeah. I mean, they must be confident if they're sourcing the potential Favreau being a bigger voice in the future of creative. And in, in terms of like, yeah. obviously, everyone inside Lucasfilm has seen all of the Mandalorian already and they're already filming season two. So it's obviously good in their eyes. Um, mm -hmm. And, if, you know, again, like. You know, we've talked about this on the on the podcast before. I think Lacey said it's a bunch of times that Kathleen Kennedy may just be like, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> like, it's not like she's getting fired. So, and it, if she does leave, it would be a, like a transition. It wouldn't be like, I'm done. Now you have to start. It would be like, okay, you're coming in and we're working together and then we're going to hand it off. And this story says that she loves Rejwan, who's the head of live action development now, and obviously Dave Filoni, so... But I don't think Filoni. Would, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think Filoni would have that big. Like a, he'd be the third on the tier. I think. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I think I would trust John Favreau more, but John Favreau still feels to me like a hired gun. Like he feels like like a Ron Howard. Like we brought him in, we hired him, he's doing his thing, and that was his project. Dave Filoni feels like he's had his hands in a lot of Star Wars content for a while now, you know? So it's like, if somebody's going to get promoted within, like, production of future Star Wars content, the only way Jon Favreau wins that spot is if they're just like, he's Jon Favreau, you know? Which is possible. Like, we just believe he'd be good for the job. Mm -hmm. Like, Arnold Schwarzenegger coming in and being like, I own your gym now. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're hired you're the manager <laughs> go ahead <laughs> so i think and that's it then um for for that right there that's pretty much all we wanted to talk about in the resistance report this week let's go ahead and send it over to lacy for the scoundrels rundown all right punch it on three one two three punch, punch it, it. All right, guys, we have a lot of news and updates to give you this week. So first of all, this Thursday, for the third time, he is the first person to ever be back for his third time, is Clayton Sandell from ABC News. We love Clayton. He's a friend of the podcast. We're excited for him to come back. He's going to talk all about Star Wars. I mean, nice. right? That's basically what he's going to talk about. Yeah. Because it's we haven't really specified exactly. It's just... yeah. He can talk about everything. He's Clayton. Yes. Uh, followed on Friday, the Mando Fan Show. We're going to have Alex and Molly of Star Wars Explained. They're coming back. This is their second time coming to a show, right? It's Molly's second, Ooh. Alex's third. Wow. But it's a different but show. So it's how a different do we show. Count yeah. That's true. Okay, so first time on the, the Mando Fan Show. <laughs> followed by, on the 6th of December, we're going to have DJ Elliot from Star Wars Celebration and Disney <laughs> coming back to do a show with us. So it's kind nice. of his second time with an yes, actor yeah. because he was also on a show. Um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, you can head over to YouTube. It is the Mando Fan Show. If you want to be a part of the show and you watch the episodes every Friday or depending on the week it is, because some weeks it's on a Wednesday, like the 18th of December. But if you watch it on Friday, Why? you can big premiere happening i guess yeah. um <laughs> drop that on friday get out of here <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you watch the episode and you have any thoughts feelings questions you can tweet at us at rbat rbat swnn with hashtag mando fando and we could give you a shout out on the show 
And last but not least, head over to StarWarsNewsNet.com for the latest news reviews, editorials, and more. All the Star Wars stuff you'll need as we head into the craziest month and a half ahead. At the end of the Skywalker saga. It's just getting started. So make sure you head over there. Um, And now I'm going to head it to myself again. What? I know. It's my show. I'm going to get a sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) Chewy, get us out of here. All right. So time for resistance transmissions, guys. Oh, baby. So... The way this works is we have a crazy, wacky situation. Um, John puts up a crazy... It sounded like I was stretching. It did. (laughs) I was just thinking of audio listeners like... "Mm, mm." (laughs) Like, what is happening? James is doing yoga. Um, Hold on. I got to get this up. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So, the scenario... I was prepared. I have no, it up. We. It's just like, I got distracted by these grunting noises that are happening over the podcast. I was trying to buy you time. To I had up. enough time. Okay, so <laughs> resistance transmissions. The scenario is, <laughs> let's pretend Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is written like an 80s, 90s action movie. Give Rey a one-liner to say before she leaps off the platform to Finn on the Millennium Falcon from, from the recent TV spot. So we included an image of her kind of standing on the edge of the hangar, Um, which, by the way, I tweeted out the clip of her jumping to Finn and was like, oh, my gosh, Ray's jumping to Finn. And I got all these people messaging me being like, oh, wow, you really don't get it, do you? Oh, wow. She's saying she's with Finn. I was like, it doesn't it doesn't mean they're they're together. She's just jumping. But whatever. You got attacked for that. Yeah. Oh, I yep. can't wait. I can't wait till this movie's <laughs> out. I like this. Yeah. I got a lot of she doesn't get it. And I was like, what? So she's there. She's jumping. He's there. I don't know. You got fans anyway. planned? I did. Oh, uh, first up is Semper Fi Danny at Semper Fi Danny, who said, I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be a good spot. <laughs> Next okay. is Brian Pothier at B Pothier. And he said, like Van Halen says, Kylo might as well jump. I love that song. Jump. Next is Scott Gibson at Scott Gibby, who says, and he puts in like little action with the asterisks. It says, tips, sunglasses, Ray to Kylo. I thought you were the Skywalker. Jumps into space. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) I did see somebody saying she's Skywalking. Yes. Like before this, yeah. Hate it. Next is Stephen Bowman at Stephen A. Bowman, who said, quote, nobody can make that jump, huh? Well, good thing I'm nobody. <laughs> that is a really good one. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, that's, that's definitely 90s action style right there. That is. <laughs> and they always take too long to say it to you. Like, you're like, you would have been dead already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next <laughs> is Mark McHamill at fake fan 50 <laughs> i'm sure it's the real one yeah uh said hasta la vista benny <laughs> ah you know what movie that that's from terminator indiana jones terminator 2 <laughs> next is agent 37 at underscore agent 37 who said kylo give it up ray you're trapped ray actually i have one trick left kylo where'd you learn it Ray puts on space sunglasses. Your mother. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good because that's a nod to the the floating Leia. Right, right. Um, next is Elijah Sawyer at Elijah Sawyer Seven. Ooh, so close. Uh, <laughs> seven away. Yeah. He said. He said, "Quote: I need some space." <laughs> that's I get it because space. Yeah. That's literally what my son's shirt said today <laughs> at work. I need some We're space. School. It said, yeah, I need my space. Huh? And it was like uh, a space shirt. Nice. <laughs> Next is Mark Newbold at prefect underscore timing, who is Never just on the show. Him. Oh. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Uh, he said, quote, I'm Mary freaking Poppins, y'all. <laughs> 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 Throwback to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Uh, that was so good. 
Yeah. Next is Andrew at Mick Marbles 27. Mr. Who Marbles. Said, oh, sorry. I'm all micked out. Mick Hamill. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mr. Marbles 27 said, I never thought about it like that before. You gotta do Go it ahead, the John. Voice. No, no, you do you it. Can, you no. do it. You I'm do not it. doing Listen, it. You read the questions. Yeah. James, Next you do is it. Danny at Chibigon89, who said, and Lacey's all business right now. See you around, kid. <laughs> Guys, thank you for your answers. If you want to be on the show, make sure to follow us at RBATSWNN on Twitter. Um, and every week, John puts up a scenario and you give your answers. And you could be on the show. It's a lot of fun. Back to you, John. Never thought about it like that before. <laughs> there it is. There was no British me- accent, though. <laughs> so quiet. You never gave me the time to do it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, listening, being a part of the resistance. Make sure if you are new to TRB, welcome. The base is always open for you guys. We always have a positive good time here and a great community. But make sure you're subscribed so you get our two episodes a week, including while our run is happening with the Mando Fan Show, that every time that posts. So you're doing that on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube, of course, if you're watching. Hello. Um, and I just said, uh, community, make sure, as Lacey said before, you always go to Star Wars Newsnet every day for your latest Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and all that. We have an awesome uh, book and comic review team. Uh, James actually works with Kyle doing the video book discussions. And also you have mm-hmm. Jordan Pate over there, Yelena Beaton, uh, Kyle Larson, uh, great uh, team over there reviewing all the comics and stuff that are going to be coming out. After all the movies and shows are done this year, a lot of comics and books, so make sure you're going to Star Wars Newsnet for all that stuff. And again, community, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. We have a great page that Lacey facilitates for us. Uh, Very active, a lot of content for you guys. We do eight mini episodes exclusive to Patreon every month. We do poll chats, Q&As, live chats with our our tier four and fives. Uh, and access to the page starts at $2 a month. So at least just hop over there and check it out. And if you find a tier that you like and you want to be a part of, join us. Again, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. And if you're thinking about like getting off social media because of spoilers, you can come to our Discord server on tier three. We have 15 channels, including spoiler exclusive channels. So you can be free of all the chaos floating around out there on the internet of all those spoilers and and just bad rumors and leaks and all that stuff. But anyway, join us over there. And you guys can find me on Twitter, not spoiling stuff, at Johnny Hoey. And writing and editing at StarWarsNewsNet.com. James Bainey, how about you, buddy? Uh, I started a, an Instagram and a Twitter page. Uh, the tag is at Myra Trunks. Um, nice. I'm pretty happy. I actually got like a lot of followers in like one day. It's pretty cool sweet yeah you are you're getting up there you're getting up there and you're verified too which is a huge thing apparently these yeah days. like i just created the count and it automatically had a blue check mark i was like oh, cool. <laughs> don't, don't have that james bandy though <laughs> yeah uh lazy people can find me on twitter and instagram at lacy gillerin and guys apparently t public's having like a sale for the next like month so if you want to get your make solo two happen shirts or your Ugnolty shirts Supreme Leader. I don't know. Whatever you like, head over to tpublic.com slash user slash resistance broadcast. Check out the designs. Pick one up if you like. Also a sticker, mug, whatever you whatever you like. I don't know. But we'll be back with you guys on Thursday, where, as Lacey said before, we'll be joined by Clayton Sandell of ABC News. And we're going to talk about, we're just going to get super hyped about everything coming up with Star Wars, uh, including maybe speculating about what the future is. Uh, so enjoy your weeks, and we'll see you on Thursday morning right here on the Resistance Broadcast. We'll see you around, kids. <laughs>